Hi guys, I'm back with another video. So today's video is yet again another Chama Chats video podcast edition. And as by the title, you can tell we're going to be talking about Black China. We started a skincare um, cream together. We had great press. I mean, yeah. People may have thought that it was negative, but it sold out, which is what it's about. The product that we came out with was just to come and help with high pigmented skin, not an actual like bleaching substance. All like the negativity is just like super annoying. And it wasn't even bleaching. It was this face brightening um, product. People don't understand like exactly what the product is. And I feel like that's the problem or whatever. Let me say the black media was the one. Yeah, I think that they don't educate people on anything. They just push whatever agenda they want. With me coming from West Africa, to be honest with you, I have never had a colorism conversation. Like you guys fight for your rights to dumb stuff every day. Why can't I do what I want to do yeah. with my body? If I want to be tan today like I am today now, I will do it. If I want to be high yellow, light and bright, right. shades yeah. of white, I will do it because that's what I want. My I used to dance and right. I was super tan. Mm -hmm. I guess they assume that, you know, I'm bright. I didn't turn all light skin, but I used to live in Miami. I was, my skin was actually a little bit darker. So that kind of like raised um, like this whole controversy thing to wait to where as though they were saying that I was bleaching my skin, which I wasn't. We're pretty girls with money. We're going to act with zip codes. It's like, y'all can't even get to our zip codes. Like, we don't even care about what you're saying from no, Harvard. No from Brokeville. So Black China and Densia put out a video. Well, they didn't put out a video, but they deflected on their comments about their skin bleaching cream and their product. So Black China has her new reality TV show with the Zeus Network that is documenting her life as a mother, as a businesswoman, and just a woman living her glamorous life and going through rich people problems, but also as well as problems that I feel like can be relatable to a lot of average people. You know, she battles her relationship struggle with her mother as well as other things. Things. And I feel like that is relatable because there is a lot of toxic mother daughter relationships that are out there. I don't know if they're as bad or to the extent of the one that Tokyo Tony and Black China have because Tokyo Tony be talking to her really, really, really crazy for that to be her daughter. But I know that that does happen and that is an epidemic with a lot of black mothers and daughters. So I have yet to watch the show because I have Netflix and I just don't feel like subscribing to another network or just one network just to watch one show. So if anything pops off you know i'll just watch it on the shade room or you guys can send this to me or you guys can send me stories like this story was sent to me by one of my subscribers and i'll shout out her instagram right here so you guys can go follow her thank you sis for sending this to me because i definitely needed to talk about this so i'm not sure of the ratings of the show to me it doesn't seem like people are checking for the show but it has been the talk of the social media town like the shade room hollywood unlocked things like that from her mother going off on her to now this conversation that she's had with densia so people are again up in arms because again Densia and Black China seem to think that they did no social or moral wrongdoing to anybody by having a skin lightening cream and promoting it to the people of darker complexion or anyone that feels the need to use this product. Now business wise I will give it up to both of them. They were able to really market this product and get it talking you know. There are thousands of bleaching creams on the market and for whatever reason these two capitalized off of a demographic with an insecurity and was able to let it be popular and infamous yet people clearly still went out and bought the product as they sold out and they even expressed in the video clip that there are celebrities who purchased the product meanwhile they were out on social media talking against them which got me thinking like hmm who y'all talking about because y'all need to drop these names but i'm not surprised because i feel like a lot of celebrities are hypocritical i mean i really do wonder who they were talking about because i feel like this is something that happens within celebrities like they'll put on this front for social media so their fan bases can hype them up and a certain way but behind closed doors they're doing the complete opposite of what they're talking about on social media like i genuinely don't believe ti was not wearing gucci for them three months where he quote unquote implemented this gucci boycott i genuinely think he was still walking around his mansion with his gucci slides probably talking about some if it ain't about the money but I digress. So I've broken my video down into four main talking points. So let's get right into this video. So number one, as usual, you guys know me. I like to address accountability. So I want to address their lack of accountability. I just can't stand when people don't take accountability because in this case, it shows how shallow people can be when influenced by money. These ladies contributed to a specific and direct effort to single-handedly add to the erasure of blackness. And yes, this is the this is a true erasure of blackness because 
they want the blackness to be gone you know in a minimal amount and this is with a product that its sole purpose is to whiten the skin in the video they express how their intent of the product and its purpose is to simply help with dark marks on the body but i call bs okay i call bs my bs meter was like literally on a thousand because i'm like no okay because no you know i'm probably gonna get a t-shirt that says because no because if i can't think of a real reason for something it's just because no and i feel like i say that a lot because no also because both of these ladies have used their products like there is no way that they are promoting a product that they themselves have not used now black china did deny that she bleached her skin in any way shape or form she expressed that she used to live in miami and therefore living in miami you will be darker because of the sun and being exposed to the sun at all times because it is a very sunny state down there in florida which i can give her credit for because she is right and when she relocated to other areas of the country that her skin i guess redeemed itself into its original or natural skin color but i could have sworn in los angeles it's also very sunny and it may not be as hot as florida but i could have sworn it's very sunny in california like at least it rains in florida i don't even think it rains in los angeles like that but correct me if i'm wrong as for dencia she has gone from dark to light like this is not nothing new we know that she's bleached her skin she's owned it there is a stark difference in the change of her complexion so she needs to be very accountable and stop acting like she didn't make the most drastic change ever you know deflecting or not taking accountability because you literally are telling on yourself like we can physically see the differences in your skin tone but she always claims that her body is her business and that she should be able to do whatever she wants which she is right she should but also be accountable and honest about the things that you are doing if you're going to be put on front street at least go hard and say exactly what you did because there's going to be people who challenge you when we smell bs and we see it there are celebrities who have lied about their body changes and enhancing their bodies and all of that there are celebrities who have yet to take accountability for their enhancements but with densia she claims her body is her business meaning not only is it her business as in the right to keep her body to herself but it also makes her money and she's able to endorse products that can bring her a very very big profit like she did here i just wish she was accountable and stop acting like she's better than people and just be honest about what she's done like we all know that she's bleached her skin she's admitted it but when you come out with this product and it's in co-collaboration with someone who has a huge celebrity and a huge following like black china whether you guys want to give her credit or not then you have to be all the way honest because there's a set of fans in a demographic that she is not familiar with the united states that are going to address her and one thing i will say is in the united states our social media black twitter black instagram hell just the shade room alone we will go hard to get answers and the truth out of these celebrities that we feel are bsing us so the deflection they both stated that they did this to brighten black heads and acne marks but we all know that is a lie okay the lie detector said that was a lie more than a million trillion billion times okay the name is white tenacious whitening does not mean fading or just lightening like whitening literally means to increase the white hue and exposure of something to showcase the white color of something i feel like they contrived this excuse because they knew eventually they'll be asked about the name of their product and is it me or is the name white initials for a product ghetto as hell like i'm sorry but this it's just ghetto to me like literally it seems like the most uneducated illiterate and undeveloped product name of the entire year like i feel like they could have chosen any other name to really promote the product and they chose something that is so fourth grade like there are fourth graders that could have come up with a better name than this literally and also it's like they both wanted to speak out and make a comment about the backlash but in the most lackluster way possible like their accountability was just completely inevident and that's why it hurts a brand like that's what hurts your brand people like to be told the truth and customers definitely like when you're honest with them i've had experiences with wigs and shipping where i couldn't get to the post office or a package got sent back for whatever reason or there are so many scenarios as to why i couldn't send off you know a wig or anything you know things happen and i'm always very honest with my customers as to what the issue is that way their hard-earned money is not pending and they don't feel like they're out of something when they shouldn't be i feel like good business structure in this day and age is dead and gone or it's just minimal or not there because people rather hurry up and make a quick buck than actually give a damn about what they're actually doing for their customers like how many girls on instagram are selling resale lashes bundles clothes you name it and that's support and i'm all here for the black business how many of them are actually very unprofessional when you inquire about a product how many of them talk to you as if you're stupid 
how many of them have the DM for prices in their bio? And then when you DM them, they don't respond. Let alone, if I have to DM you for prices, I'm not buying your stuff. Like, it's a million and one people selling lashes or whatever it may be. There's just nothing so spectacular about what you're doing that's going to make me want to wait on you to tell me the price of your stuff. Like, I just want to be able to go to a site and be able to purchase what they have you know and my stuff come within like a week or so like a lot of you black business owners have to really step it up because the level of professionalism is often very low there's a need to promote black business but you also have to put your money where your mouth is and you also have to be accountable and that's what these ladies failed to do point number two their marketing was very strategic they placed the product promotion in a location where people suffer from skin color issues nigeria now i'm nigerian you guys know i'm nigerian okay all right you guys listening listen up this is queen chama talking now all right the nigerian one now when i previously reported on this i stated that densia was nigerian but she's actually from cameroon so i just want to correct myself let's just get down to the name of the product white initials like if this was not a skin bleaching cream i feel like the name of the product would have used the words lightener brightener or toner you know within its name but to full-blown call it white initials signifying that white is the desired shade to attain just shows how shallow these ladies are when it comes to business unfortunately there are women out there who feel that a whiter complexion means more beautiful more pretty more positive just more better for themselves socially and everything even though it's not morally correct socially and within society that is what tends to be happening here this product emphasizes the same rhetoric and i'm sure there's been some people who have become a victim to their own insecurities and will come and do anything to change it we all know that skin bleaching creams are very unhealthy for the skin okay they damage your melanin they make you more irritable to the sun and so many other side effects the amount of women that are willing to go the extra mile and risk their health for the standard of beauty that is honestly shifting is so sad to me and these ladies both marketed this product to those people and then turn around and act like that wasn't the intent of their product like square up both of y'all need to square up because <laughs> the lies is just too much like with this marketing is just ridiculous now every nigerian knows or has or maybe you are <laughs> the auntie or cousin whose hands do not match their face i recently went to baltimore a few weekends ago for my mom's high school reunion and there were so many ladies there from her high school that she went to in Owerri, emo state nigeria and there was a gala night with so many people and it was primarily women and it was ironic because this is the first time that i saw so many women at a nigerian event i Obviously, it was meant for them, you know, to unify with old friends. But I was also very observant of all the things that I saw. So, you know, I'm a girly girl. I like makeup. I like fashion. I like all of that. So there were a lot of aunties there that were dressed to impress. And there were also a lot that looked crazy, okay? There was this occurring notion that both my dad and I noticed. And my dad and I are very petty, okay? We have inside jokes, we crack up, we do the whole nine yards. And it's a very funny relationship. And there was one woman in particular whose face was so caked up in a foundation that was not her color and did not match whatsoever. And I'm not talking, you know, a few shades off or anything like that. I mean completely not her color like it looked ashy and it just had this white cast it was almost as if she was just wearing sunscreen on her face and you can tell because she had that sickly look compared to her hands her arms and her chest and it was just off i don't think skin bleaching is the biggest social issue in nigeria granted i don't live there i just visit every christmas and i'll be there again in december but it's something that happens not as much as maybe it does in the caribbeans especially jamaica but it's something that happens and nigeria is at the forefront of the african continent as a whole and on a global standard when you talk about africa you mention nigeria hands down so they went to the most popular country in the entire continent and did what they did and it worked as well as capitalizing off the women who have that insecurity now i will say my biggest insecurity is my skin as it relates to the blackheads and the acne marks i've tried a lot of things and at this point i tried whatever to see if i can get these dark marks off you know i'm keeping up with my black soap but i don't think actually i know I would never go as far as to bleaching my skin to remove the marks. I feel like within marketing, especially because I'm a marketing major, if they were going to be deceitful about the product's intentions, then they should have marketed in the best way possible. In the pictures and ads, you can see that Black China's skin looks more white than she normally looks. And they use a live model, which is Densia, you know, someone who has gone through this process, to showcase how you can go from her natural born complexion to what she looks like now. So their marketing was 
spot on. Had they just marketed this as a dark mark fading cream, they would have probably seen so much more success because there are people who are suffering from hyperpigmentation, blackheads, dark marks, and all of those other things that would love to fade their marks as well as support black business. But this is the type of business that I just can't get with. And the crazy thing is I really do like Black China, no matter how she is perceived. I definitely think that she is usually an honest person about what she does, but she's very dismissive when it comes to high pressure about her life and her business because she feels like she doesn't owe people an explanation. But when you're playing with people's health, then all of that just goes out the window, which brings me to my next point. Point number three, Densia's arrogant dismissal. Now, this girl, I don't know what's wrong with her, okay? She just needs to just pipe down. Just sit down there before I slap you. Uh-uh. What is the meaning of this nonsense? Like, she just used her fame and her fortune to dismiss these quote-unquote haters as if that justifies what she did and what she was a part of. Instead of her to see where people were coming from and just write an honest statement about the product, she didn't. I would have respected her more if she just would have been like, hey, I made this product. It is skin lightening. It helps with this issue, that issue, and so much more. And I stand by my products. It is available at XYZ.com. But instead, she went to bash the people who were talking about her and did this in the most arrogant and mean way i completely understand as an influencer with followers there's gonna be people that talk about you in a bad way and some days you just go off okay it's not every day that you're just gonna read a comment and let it go there are people in my comment section that tell me that i need to have tougher skin and that i respond to everything negative but i really don't if i even posted 1 38th of the mean comments i get you guys will be so up in arms as to why i don't respond and i let people talk to me the way that i do but it's just a part of this business and it's also a part of life as you guys grow you're gonna understand that not everyone's going to like you and you don't have to like everybody not everyone's going to like what you do and you don't have to like what everyone does not everyone's going to respect your hustle and you don't have to respect everyone else's hustle it's life but i feel like people who are business owners have to learn how to agree to disagree that is the only way that you can be professional in your stature when addressing negativity from the things that you're doing to an extent okay because some people get crazy you can't go and bash those same demographics of people who don't like what you're doing and expect them to just shut up and follow your order and obey your wishes and your product it does not work that way and it's just not possible has she got mods you know she needs to come to her senses and quick like she even said quote y'all can't even get into our zip codes you guys live in brokeville as if we or the people who talk about her or buy her products are not the ones who are keeping her afloat like how can you talk about your supporters in that way who may be living in brokeville and then expect respect and a positive response like you need to humble yourself and remember where you came from you came from cameroon you were a dark-skinned girl who you know i guess maybe hated herself or if it wasn't that far you were insecure and thought your skin was ugly that is the same insecurity that is superimposed on the customers that you have yet she just thinks that she's better than people like sis please humility will take you a long way not only in life but in business as well and plenty of times i put my pride aside to just do what was best for the customer as well as what was best for myself and i'm not saying i'm the best business owner out here you know i just have a small channel and i have my own side businesses that do pretty well but i feel like you can't be on this type of high horse and think that you can't get knocked off what if i came out with a skin lightening or dark marks cream and did better than her now she's going back to brookville now she's living in check to check city now you're catching the bus at section 8 station now you're shopping at two poor food store. How about that? Now, my fourth and final point is the quote unquote synonymous relation to hair. I know there will be a comment about black women who wear weaves and how this is similar, but it's not. OK, but it's not. OK, it's not. <laughs> it's not like because no. Weaves do not have to be in a silkier texture. They just usually are, okay? And you guys aren't mad at people who wear weaves and wigs. You're just mad at the texture, which is a choice based on the convenience and likeness of the wearer. And furthermore, you can take them off, okay? And still have beautiful, undamaged, tight four or whatever hair underneath without having to manipulate your own hair. As well as the majority of black women who wear weaves and wigs do so for protection and convenience. Now, people say that they just don't understand if a person is happy with their natural hair, then what is the problem with it being seen? And it's not about being seen. That's just the excuse that non weave slash wig wearers make to justify their dislike of other women using hair extension. Most girls who wear weave or wigs use it more for protection and convenience.
convenience, like I said, more than anything else. But some people rather bash and condemn them than understand and accept that there are benefits to wearing weaves and wigs. And then some people may argue and say protection from what? And that, you know, nature doesn't make anyone lose hair. And you may also argue that, you know, that hair grows from the root. So any manipulation to your own natural hair is trying to get your 4C type 4 hair to behave like another texture. And you may also question the conveniences. And, you know, heat is a manipulation. Excessive, like constant gel, you know, edge control, just to simply lay down edges is manipulation. Hair dye is manipulation. Manipulation comes in more forms than just trying to get 4C hair to look like another texture or be a certain style. With wigs, I can use slash do all of that and not even damage my hair remotely as much as I would to my own natural hair trying to manipulate it to whatever. And it's not about losing hair. It's about retaining healthy, strong, and nourished hair. The only way people lose hair is through genetics, old age, a certain health condition, and some women do so through postpartum. Convenience is self-explanatory as well, okay? And it's subjective to the individual. 4C hair requires more effort than other textures, even for those who are experienced and have become proficient in natural hair care. Again, I myself, I'm still learning and will always be learning but my wigs have served more of a benefit to my natural hair it's not about the texture of the wig it's about the protection from using the wig okay and there's a right and wrong way to doing that as well heat dryness from the climate manipulation the list goes on 4c hair is more vulnerable than other hair types and i'm still learning styles that works for my hair but using wigs for protection has worked for me to retain length manage my hair faster and it's just easier so that's that on that because i know someone's going to say that so all in all i feel no different than i did in my previous video which i will put in my end screen that i just can't respect the intentions of their product but this follow-up clip shows that both of these ladies didn't have a care in the world for what they were doing still don't and never will and we're just gonna have to accept that and i hope that there's many girls who don't feel the pressures of being a darker complexion i may not be the darkest girl but sometimes i felt that pressure like damn i'm around all these girls who look a certain way and how am i going to be perceived even if it's not by men for attraction and dating purposes how am i going to be perceived professionally what are your preconceived notions about me like there's so many things that go through your head as being a darker girl and i can sit here and say again embrace your darkness but like i said in my previous video just accept it for what it is and then work on embracing it that's the only way that you can get over this black china and densia black china i do like you to an extent but both of y'all it's just a no for me okay because no so that is it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed what are your thoughts and comments don't forget to follow me on all of my social media networks and i will see you guys in my next video bye guys